This was originally when radio astronomy began, Mr. Jansky at the Bell Labs detected radio waves coming from the sky. And the regular astronomers were, were scornful about this. They said, well, they'll not, they'll, you, it's, it's all right, to, you can detect radio waves from the sun, but the sun is the only object in the universe that's close enough and bright enough actually to be detectable. You can easily calculate the radio waves from the sun are fairly faint. And everything else in the universe is millions of times further away. So it certainly will not be detectable. So there's no point in looking. And that, of course, re that, that set back the progress of radio astronomy by about 20 years. Since there was nothing there, you might as well not look. Well, of course, as soon as anybody did look, which was after about 20 years, when radio astronomy really took off, because it turned out the universe is absolutely full of all kinds of wonderful things radi radiating in, in the radio spectrum, much brighter than the sun. So the same thing could be true for this kind of life which I'm talking about on cold objects, that it could, in fact, be very abundant all over the universe, and it's not been detected just because we haven't taken the trouble to look. So uh, uh, the last thing I want to talk about is how to detect it. That there is something called pit lamping. That's the phrase which I learned from my son George, who is there in the audience. You take, uh, that's a, 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 a Canadian expression. If you happen to want to hunt animals at night, you take a miner's lamp, which is a pit lamp, you strap it onto your forehead so you can see the reflection in the eyes of the animals. So if you go out at night, you shine a flashlight, the, the animals are bright. You, you, you see the, the red glow in their eyes, which is the reflection of the flashlight. And then if you're one of these unsporting char characters, you shoot the animals and take them home. And of course, that spoils the game for the other hunters who hunt in the daytime. So in Canada, that's illegal. In New Zealand, it's legal, because the New Zealand farmers use this as a way of getting rid of rabbits. The rabbits compete with the sheep for the, for, in, in New Zealand. So the farmers go out at night with heavily armed jeeps and shine the headlights. And, and, and anything that doesn't look like a sheep, you shoot. So I have proposed to apply the same trick to looking for life in the universe, that if these creatures who are living on cold surfaces, either on Europa or further out, anywhere where you can live on a cold surface, those creatures must be provided with reflectors. In order to concentrate sunlight, they have to have lenses and mirrors in order to keep themselves warm. And then when you shine sunlight at them, the sunlight will be reflected back just as it is in the eyes of an animal. So these creatures will be bright against the cold surroundings. And the further out you go in the, in, in, away from the sun, the more powerful this reflection will be. So actually, this method of, of hunting for life gets stronger and stronger as you go further away, because the optical reflectors have to be more powerful. So the reflected light shines out even more in, uh, in contrast against the dark background. So as you go further away from the sun, this becomes more and more powerful. So in fact, you can look for these creatures with telescopes from the Earth. Why aren't we doing it? Simply because nobody thought of it yet. But I hope that we shall look, and with any, with, we, 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 we probably won't find anything. None of these speculations may have any basis in fact. But still, it's, 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 it's a good chance. And of course, it, if it happens, it will transform our view of life altogether. Because it means that the way life can live out there, it has enormous advantages as compared with living on a planet. It's extremely hard to move from one planet to another. We've, we're having great difficulties at the moment. And any creatures that live on a planet are pretty well stuck especially if you breathe air. It's very hard to get from planet A to planet B because there's no air in between. If you breathe air, then you... <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
you're dead. <laughs> if you, as soon as you're off the planet, unless you have a spaceship. But if you live in a vacuum, if you live on the surface of one of these objects, say in the Kuiper belt, uh, these, this, uh, an object like Pluto or one of the smaller creatures, which is uh, smaller objects in the neighborhood of Pluto, and you happen, if, you, if you're living on the surface there and you get knocked off the surface by a collision, then it ha doesn't change anything all that much. You still are on a piece of ice. You can still have sunlight and you can still survive while you're traveling from one place to another. And then if you run into another object, you can stay there and colonize the other object. So life will spread then from one object to another. So if it, if it exists at all in the Kuiper belt, it's likely to, to be very widespread. And you will have then a great competition among species and Darwinian evolution. So there'll be a huge advantage to the species which is able to jump from one place to another without having to wait for a collision. And there'll be advantages f for spreading out long sort of kelp-like forest of vegetation. I call these creatures sunflowers. They look like, maybe like sunflowers. They have to be all the time pointing toward the sun. And they will be able to spread out in space because gravity on these objects is weak. So they can collect sunlight from a big area. So they will, in fact, be quite easy for us to detect. So I hope in the next 10 years we'll find these creatures. And then, of course, our whole view of life in the, in, in the universe will change. If we don't find them, then we can create them ourselves. <laughs> That's another wonder, a wonderful opportunity that's opening. We can, as soon as we have a little bit more understanding of genetic engineering, one of the things that you can do with your take it home, do it yourself genetic engineering kit <laughs> is to de design a creature that can live on a cold satellite, a place like Europa. So we could colonize Europa with our own creatures. That would be. A fun, a fun thing to do, and it would. <laughs> In the long run, of course, it would also make it possible for us to move out there. The, what's going to happen in the end? It's not going to be just humans colonizing space. It's going to be life moving out from the Earth, moving it into its kingdom. And the, the, the kingdom of life, of course, is going to be the universe. And if life is already there, it makes it much more exciting in the short run. But in the long run, if there's no life there, we create it ourselves. We transform the universe into something much more rich and beautiful than it is today. So again, we have a big and wonderful future to look forward. Thank you. That was incredible. Thank you.